Welcome to this video presentation about the medial collateral ligament of the knee. My name is Mark Schmitz, I'm a lecturer of anatomy, physiotherapy and musculoskeletal ultrasound and founder of the Anatomy and Physiotherapy Facebook page. In this three-part video presentation I'm discussing a few topics. In the previous episode I discussed the anatomy of the various layers of the MCL. In next episode, I'm going to discuss the examination of the MCL and evidence-based physiotherapy. At the end of each part, I will provide you a link to the reference list of the articles I used. But first, what is the exact biomechanical function of all the various layers of the MCL complex? Functional relationships between MCL and capsule, medial meniscus and anterior cruciate ligaments do exist, but for now, we only focus on the biomechanics of the MCL. It has become commonly agreed on that the superficial MCL is the primary valgus stabilizer of the knee. In these figures you see what happens when the MCL, the ACL or a combination of them are cut. A significant change in the medial joint space opening can be seen when the MCL is cut. The medial joint space is opening slightly more when also the ACL is cut. In cadaver knee studies, the superficial MCL provided 57% of the restraining knee valgus moment at 5 degrees of knee flexion and provided 78% of the restraining moment at 25 degrees of knee flexion due to decreased contribution from the posterior media capsule or the PMC. Therefore, when examining purely the MCL, a valgus stress test in 25 to 30 degrees of flexion is advised. Examination in 5 degrees of flexion will test the MCL combined with the posterior capsule. Data indicates that the collateral ligaments do not elongate uniformly as the knee is flexed, with different bundles becoming taut and slack. The MCL can be divided into three equal portions, an anterior bundle, a middle bundle and a posterior bundle. The length of the anterior bundle of the MCL doesn't change significantly with flexion. The length of the posterior bundle of the MCL consistently decreased with flexion. The change in length of the deep portion of the MCL with flexion is similar to the trend observed uh, as for the MCL. The distal division of the superficial MCL has been reported to be a primary knee stabilizer to external rotation. In addition, it is theorized that the more medial superficial MCL fibers, which do not attach directly to its proximal tibial attachment, become less taut during external rotation loads, resulting in the decrease in force seen on the proximal division of the superficial MCL. Subsequently, the increased loads which are not absorbed by the proximal division of the superficial MCL are likely diverted to the deep MCL or the cruciate ligaments. Due to the wedge-shaped form, the menisci tend to be extruded out of the knee joint under axial joint loads. To avoid this, and to satisfy their biomechanical function, the menisci are attached to the tibial plateau by strong ligaments. The deep MCL is a part of the meniscal stabilizing ligament. The deep MCL is also a secondary valgus stabilizer of the knee. Although lots of literature report the interconnection in anatomy and biomechanical function between the MCL and the medial meniscus, there is now research from the University of Cologne in Germany, done by Stein and others, showing that there is no relevant influence of the MCL on the stability of the medial meniscus. Injury to the medial meniscus is normally explained by its reduced mobility due to its strong adherence to the MCL. However, in this study of 2011, it is concluded that the biomechanical characteristics of the deep parts of the MCL play only a minor role in the tensile testings and thereby axial stability. 
the hypothesis of a responsibility of the MCL on the more frequent incidence of meniscal tears in the medial meniscus is disproved. It must be mentioned that the number of specimens put to biomechanical investigation was limited. This very recent research from Stein and others has already been posted on the Anatomy and Physiotherapy Facebook page where the newest ideas, pictures, videos and latest evidence-based information about anatomy and physiotherapy are posted on an almost daily basis, high quality and spam free. Please like us. The posterior oblique ligament experiences tensile loads to valgus and internal rotation forces in intact knees especially close to knee extension. Literature reports that the posterior oblique ligament has a secondary stabilization role in valgus stability of the knee. This ligament and posterior medial capsule have a significant role in the prevention of additional posterior tibial translation in the knee with posterior cruciate ligament injury. The screw hole movement of the knee joint is an involuntary lateral rotation of the knee in the final phase of knee extension. The MCL plays, together with other structures, a role in this. The main function of the MCL is providing a passive stability. Each MCL component has, as I just explained, its own function. According to Pajabi, three subsystems work together to maintain joint stability. The central nervous subsystem, for control, an osseoligamentous subsystem, for the, the passive structures in the joint, and a muscle subsystem, the active structures. The stability provided by the MCL is of a passive kind. Of course, there is always the presence of intra-MCL proprioceptic sensors which signal the brain about incoming movement, loads and disturbances. As a reaction, the muscle system around the knee will be activated to provide the active stability which is needed. A 100% valgus stability cannot be guaranteed by the MCL alone. It gets help from the pes anterior, anterior, the sartorius tendon, in the middle, the gracilis tendon, and posterior, the semitendinosus tendon. The pes anterior and the MCL are interconnected. Okay, I hope that the biomechanics of the MCL is clear. In the third and last episode, I'm going to discuss evidence-based physiotherapy and examination of the MCL. The list with the 46 used references can be downloaded for free at kinicare.nl. The default language of the page is Dutch. Click the little flags for English or German. Click Education. And after entering the page, again, Education. Choose in the scroll bar Social Media and download the reference list. One long extended version of the three episode MCL video presentation can be viewed at the Anatomy and Physiotherapy Facebook page. This video presentation has been made by Kinicare, specialist in anatomy and musculoskeletal ultrasound with a special interest in the shoulder girdle. Thank you for your attention and see you next time.